Jarvis lectures on international security at the University of East Anglia. He joins us now from Norwich in the UK. Thanks so much for joining us. Khalid Massoud was born Adrian Russell Ajao. And again, we're hearing he was known to police beforehand. Are you of the mind that intelligence services did all they could in the lead up to this attack? I think the, the important thing to remember in a situation like this is that intelligence in a counterterrorism context is, is fiendishly difficult, that we're dealing with a type of threat that is, by, na by its nature, secretive, clandestine, it's evolving. And I think it's really important to bear in mind that, firstly, there is no single profile that intelligence services can draw on to identify potential attackers, but also that, that the names of potentially risky individuals come across the desks of police and intelligence services in their many thousands. So I think it would be very harsh to say a better job could have been done. Okay, Lee, let me ask you this, and we've, this has been discussed many times before. These attackers are not mentally well people. They most often have criminal records, and they commit these attacks often because they can go down in a blaze of glory fighting for a perverse cause. Does naming them ultimately give them that glory and actually help terrorist groups like Daesh? I mean, I, th I think certainly one of the things that marks terrorism out from other kinds of violence is this th symbolic theatrical nature, that there's this desire for publicity in theatre often. But I also think we need to be really careful in terms of explaining these violences by psychology or mental illness or even by faith and religion. The causes of events like this are so much more complex and are often deeply political as much as they are personal or, or religious. And so I think we need to be wary about using the language of radicalization and, and so forth. How do you think we, as ordinary citizens, need to get our heads around this being part of our reality today, the threat of terrorist attacks like this? I think there are two things I would say there. On the one hand, this idea that we can be completely secure from terrorism or, or anything else is, is simply is a myth, that, that modern life involves risks of various sorts, and we have to, in some ways, learn to live with that. At the same time, for, for individuals living in, in cities like London and many other places around the world, it's really important not to overreact to events like this and to remember that the threat of terrorism in places like London in particular is very, very minor and, and is greatly outweighed by other security risks, other kinds of violence that, that occur. So it's important to try to keep some kind of perspective about the threat that terrorism poses. So you, do you congratulate London today for how life has continued uh, as normally as it can in the wake of what happened? I think so. I think if the purpose of, if this was, say, an act of terrorism and the purpose of that is to spread fear and so forth, one of the best ways of resisting that and of countering that is to refuse to succumb to that politics of fear and to refuse to succumb to the, the divisive type of language that follows these events to avoid the the, the more populist kind of right-wing rhetoric that, that has followed. So absolutely, I, I think standing together and refusing to bow down is really important. Okay. Lee Jarvis joining us there from Norwich in the UK. Thanks so much for your insight.